good evening, everybody. Glad everybody came. And it was interesting. There was a preamble up here for the Rotary Club earlier, and I was looking at some of the values portrayed on there, and it really reminded me of my three sons. That's kind of really what our show was about: was family values. But uh, in fact, I just found out actually from watching the History Channel. I, I, you know, I really didn't know that World War II was in color. I thought it was black and white. <laughs> just found this out. I mean, does anybody know what Ozzy did for a living? I sure don't. <laughs> he had a great lifestyle. And then my career really took off. I started doing movies. Uh, I did Rally Around the Flag Boys with Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward. I did another film called Please Underneath the Daisies with Doris Day, David Niven. I did another film called X-15 with Charlie Bronson, before anybody knew really who Charlie Bronson was, <laughs> which all led up to me uh, being fairly well known in Hollywood at that point in time as a child actor. And my agent received a call from a gentleman named Don Federson, who was casting a, uh, a TV series, which all we knew about it was it was going to be a family TV series that was going to star a huge, huge movie star. Before I got home, my agent called and said, you've got the job. And I'm like, I wonder what the job is, because I didn't know what it was. So I'm like, OK. And lo and behold, it was a show called My Three Sons. They had worked out a proposal for Fred to get him involved in the show, which ultimately became known as the McMurray Method. And the McMurray Method was, he was sort of off all the time, and the rest of us did all the work. <laughs> we would work sometimes in up to nine scripts a day. I changed my shirt, and they put eggs in front of me, and then I changed my shirt, and they'd be jello. I changed my shirt, and mashed potatoes or whatever we were eating in the scene. So we'd, we'd have days where I would just be sitting there eating all this stuff, and I'd take this big mouthful of what turned out to be mashed potatoes with menthol <laughs> shaving cream on them. Uh, yeah, they got me on that one. I think that's why I'm so short, actually. Um, I ate lunch with Bill Frawley for the four years and a few months he was on the show, every single day at a restaurant called Nicodell's. He was sort of a W.C. Fields kind of character. He didn't like animals and he didn't like kids. <laughs> and for whatever reason, he took a shine to me and we, were just, we just became fast friends. It was an interesting dilemma for the writers how to write him into the scenes because if he had too much dialogue, he couldn't remember it. And if he had too few lines, he would <laughs> So I pinch his toe, and that was my job was to keep Bill Frawley awake while we were doing the shooting so we could get to the scene. He and Vivian Vance had a feud going, and that's, I guess that's legendary. Everybody knows they were feuding, but uh, he thought he was rid of her. In the second or third year of My Three Sons, Lucy decided to do a show called The Lucy Show instead of I Love Lucy and brought Vivian ba Vance back. Much to Bill's horror, <laughs> they were on the next sound stage, and every day when they sort of came in together, they would just you know kind of curse each other out. For this thing that will probably uh, be interesting too. It's a lot of the work I did that really led up to My Three Sons, and I think there's actually a couple of clips from My Three Sons in here as well. And here's an Ozzy and Harriet. What's going on here? We've been cabin in there, Mr. Nelson. Yeah, just like the work. Sure's good captain, boy. <laughs> You're bank robbers, and I've got the key to your getaway car. Thanks for that. You turn off that television set, and you take your brother, and you go upstairs, and you look at your radio. How do you look at a radio? Don't correct your father. You heard what your mother said. Now! Hey, you clowns, cut that out. I told you.
Roberto. You can't do that to my brother. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Jackie. Yeah? Come on over, sit down. You love that afro? <laughs> Big red afro, David Jolliffe. I mean, other actors have gone through that too. There's, you know, even adult actors. We all wonder how long our careers are going to be, and that's the one insecure thing about being an actor is your last job could very well be your last job ever. I've heard the story about, uh, I think it was Burt Reynolds and Clint Eastwood. They were under contract at one point to Universal, and I guess one of the executives called them to the office together and said, sorry to tell you guys this, but Universal's decided not to really, you know, renew your contract and we're letting you go. And they left and they're heading out to the parking lot and Reynolds <laughs> turned to Clint Eastwood and said, well, what are we going to do? And he said, I, I don't know. And Bert Reynolds said, well, I can always learn how to act, but I don't know what you're going to do about that accent. <laughs> My mom was friends with this agent whose son was Don Grady, who had been a Musketeer. And she suggested that they see Don, and they did. And he was hired on the spot, and we started resuming. We finally shot the pilot, which became the pilot episode for My Three Sons. But uh, curiously, the guy that they fired that couldn't do comedy went on to become a huge, huge TV star and a huge, huge movie star. It was Ryan O'Neill. <laughs> and listen, I want you to pull a coin out and put it on the railroad, right on the track. And that'll be a little bit of business for you to do. And I was so afraid of this guy by that point. I remember I got to the point where I was on the track and I couldn't get the coin out. And the train is coming and it's coming and by all rights, I should have probably been out of there by then. But I was going, you know what, I'd rather face that train than Henry Hathaway. <laughs> so I stayed there and just as I'm putting the coin down, George Rapard saved my life, man. He swooped me out of the way of that train. What I do today is moved up to uh, produce feature films. Last year I did a uh, feature that was a Cinerama feature. It was actually the first Cinerama film uh, that's been shown or exhibited or even shot in 50 years since uh, How the West Was Won, which I was in. I decided to do something for my industry, which has been so generous and kind to me over the years. And I got the idea to produce a program, an educational program for actors that doesn't Nothing to do with acting. It's totally focused on the business side of the industry. So that we finally have a program, literally, that's the horse's mouth on this topic, and we put together a 10-hour program for actors. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for uh, coming out tonight and uh, watching the video, and you know, hopefully you guys had fun, hopefully nostalgic. I guess a lot of you people can remember when we had one TV set in the house, that little black and white thing that everybody gathered around with their parents, and we all watched TV together. Uh, and then the screen went big, and now we're back to this. <laughs> much cinerama on that. The story about My Three Sons is, until about three months ago, I never knew our show won a Golden Globe Award. It was the best show in 1962. It was just, somehow they kept that a secret from me. We did have people nominated for Emmys a few times. We never won. The winner on our show was, who do you think? Right. Tramp. <laughs> Tramp won the Patsy Award, which is like winning the Academy Award for Animals. The Stanley Livingston Award, which we've never given before, and it says, thanks for the memories, you entertained us, you made us laugh. You are as much a part of our culture as apple pie. We thank you and we honor you. Please accept this sincere token of our ongoing affection. Thanks for the memories. Thank, Thank you. you.